Hey everyone, this is Chappie at Intense, and for today's video, we are gonna be going over how to adjust and align your brakes. So we'll be using a Primer 2.9 today, and we'll be focusing on the rear brake, but the process is identical for the front brake. So let's get started. So most of our brake systems will utilize a five millimeter Allen head bolt to adjust and tighten the caliper. And then additionally, we will be using a tuning fork. So multiple brands have different versions of this same rotor truing tool tuning fork, um, but here we'll be using the Pedro's desk wrench. So the first step we wanna do here is kind of assess if we need to make a brake adjustment and then also what a brake adjustments that we will need to make. So, I mean, the most simple method of doing this is just simply spinning the rear wheel. And we're gonna be looking for things like noise, drag, in any type of inconsistencies in the way the wheel spins. So basically if there's one spot that has a lot of resistance and then it's free spinning the rest of the way around, that's gonna require a different adjustment than what a just straight, you know, very, very heavily rubbing rotor system that we have here. So for demonstration purposes, we made this brake and rotor assembly out of adjustment so we can display one of the most common symptoms and that's a caliper that is out of adjustment. All right, so now that we know that the caliper is out of adjustment and that there's a, a significant amount of rotor rub here, the first step is we just wanna loosen up our caliper. This will give us an opportunity to get things aligned and repositioned. Now when we loosen the bolts, we only need to go half a turn. All right, so next step is we just wanna confirm that the caliper is free to move. So. Just simply making sure that it can move freely on our post and our bolts. We know that's good. So next step here is we're going to actually go up to the lever and give the lever um, two to three pumps and then a hold. All right, so while still holding the lever, we're going to come back to our caliper in our five millimeter and we are going to very gently tighten the bolts in a four, four point sequence. So we'll start with our front. We're going to go a quarter turn, come back to the rear, go a quarter turn, Come back up to the front, do a quarter turn, back to the rear, and do a quarter turn. So that will help to tighten the caliper down without allowing it to move too much. Once that is snugged into position, we'll go back up to the lever and actually release it. And then we'll, we can give the wheel a spin. And then we're gonna just check for rub or any type of um, noise, grinding, anything like that that would cause cause brake friction. So as you can see, it's actually adjusted properly with just that really simple step. Um, and we can go into a finer detail of adjustment as well. Um, but that's the quick and dirty way to get your caliper aligned to your rotor. All right, so now that we've got the caliper and the rotor roughly aligned, um, that's step one. So step two is going to be doing our fine adjustment. So we're gonna take a look at essentially coming from the top of our caliper and looking at the space that sits between the brake pad and the rotor itself. All right, so coming over to the caliper, I'm just gonna use a dental pick here just to show us where we're at. But essentially, we're gonna be looking for that gap. So as we see here, the front gap is actually very, very good. Um, the gap towards the rear of the caliper or the back of the pad is a little bit wider on the inside, so on the drive side, than it is on the non-drive side. So since this is only just snugged into position and we need to move this side out, we're just going to loosen this back caliper bolt a quarter turn. Then we're gonna slightly displace the caliper outboard, looking for that even gap between the drive side of the rotor and the non-drive side of the rotor. Then once we're there, we'll just gently snug that bolt, that quarter turn back into position and we'll take another look. Give the wheel a spin, just to confirm there's no rub all the way around the rotor. And that looks to be good. All right, so now that we've gone through the process of aligning the caliper to the rotor, let's take a look at the next possible symptom or scenario. So this one in particular um, is common if you're traveling or things like that. Maybe your rotor got knocked while riding, um, but this is a, essentially a bent rotor. In most cases, this is repairable very si with a very simple process, which we'll go over. But first we gotta figure out where it's bent so we know what to address. So with this situation, we have a bike with a bent rotor and we're going to basically just simply spin the wheel to determine where it's at. 
So as you can see, the wheel spins freely almost all the way around, but will stop right here. So I like to use a point of reference. So we have our Minion logo here for our tire and then the Attense logo on our seat stay. So we'll just spin it again and just to confirm that it'll stop in that same area. So as we see, it has. So this narrows it down to one particular spot on the rotor that we need to address. So with the wheel still in that position, we'll go over to the other side and take a closer look. All right, so now that we have located the spot where our rotor is bent or displaced, you know, going off of this side, we were at the Minion logo here, and this will give our point of reference within the caliper here. So what we'll do is just simply roll the wheel back, kind of keeping track of where that rotor sits within that caliper. And this gives our spot of interest here. So knowing that, we're gonna take our rotor truing tool or disc wrench in this case, and we're going to place the long side across the back, short side across the front. And we're gonna displace or move the rotor back to where it was originally. So in this case, the rotor was too far towards us or too far to the non-drive side in this particular spot. So we're gonna to want to push the rotor back the other way so it's center line. So we'll go ahead and give this a couple pushes. So as we do this, it's always important to just do one or two small adjustments and then recheck. Then once we get it to where we see that visually there's space between both sides of the rotor and it looks to be centered up, you know, the simplest way to check this is just go ahead and give the wheel a spin. And we'll be listening for any, any type of noises, creaks, squeaks or creaks coming from the rotor or the caliper. And then also looking to see if the wheel stops or starts slowing down in any particular area. So as you can see here, the wheel's spinning pretty freely and it doesn't look like we're having much in the way of rub. So I think we've solved the issue here. So now that we've got the caliper aligned, rotor trued and everything looking as it should and, and in good running shape there, the next step here is we're going to go ahead and torque the caliper. Um, so we'll, we're going to do this in a bit of a sequence just to make sure that the caliper doesn't move out of adjustment. So we're going to hit each bolt twice um, in sequence. So it'll be a four step sequence. And then additionally, um, there are different torque values depending on the manufacturer of brake you're using. So this entire process that we've done is similar um, in almost every way, depending on manufacturer, um, but the torque values are different. So in this case, we're running Shimano. That's gonna be our eight to 10 Newton meter range. Um, if you're running SRAM, that's six to eight Newton meters. And if you're running Magura, that's 5.7 or essentially six Newton meters of torque. So in this case, we're Shimano. We've got our torque wrench set to eight Newton meters. We're gonna go ahead and torque this down. So what I mean by sequence is we're just gonna go just slightly. We're gonna make it tighter than it previously was, but not up to torque. Do the same thing on the front and we'll come to the back again and then bring it up to torque. And repeat on front. And again, what we wanna do is just go ahead and spin this guy and make sure that there is no change in our adjustment. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so there you have it. We have successfully completed our brake adjustment and rotor tuning process. Um, a couple things to take into to consideration and note here. Um, the braking system is the most important part of your bike and ensuring safety while riding. So it's really important to make sure, one, that all the surfaces, including your hands, are clean while you go through this process. And two, that you torque every brake bolt. Um, and this is something that you should be doing on a regular basis as well. So. Um, torquing your front caliper, your rear caliper, whatever it might be. Anytime you work on your brakes, make that the final step um, and torque those bolts. Um, beyond that, if you have any questions on the process or need any other assistance along the way, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. They'll be more than happy to get you taken care of. Thanks so much for choosing Intense.